Hello, welcome everybody to part 2 about preclinical development of Eculizumab. Solirifs belongs to a class of biologics, particularly it is a monoclonal antibody, so a type of protein that has been designed to recognize and attach to specific structures within the body, called the antigens. It's first in its class inhibitor manufactured by Alexion Pharmaceutical Incorporations based in Connecticut, USA. In 2007, Eculizumab received accelerated approval by FDA as an orphan drug for the treatment of patients with PNH to reduce hemolysis. Later, in 2011, its therapeutic indication was extended to include the treatment of patients with AHAS. Eculizumab is the igg kappa monoclonal antibody that was derived from mouse and underwent special recombination steps to obtain humanized version of the molecule. It carries the complementary determining regions of the mouse antibody against human complement protein 5 that are inserted into human constant regions containing of the mixture of IgG2 and IgG4 sequences. Such modifications minimized immunogenicity and prevented pro-inflammatory responses. Eculizumab has a molecular weight of approximately 148 kilodaltons. Eculizumab has been designed to attach to the human complement protein C5, which is part of the body's defense mechanism called complement system. Complement system is a complex cascade of more than 20 serum proteins. It culminates in the production of the so-called membrane attack complex, shortly MAC, that results in cell lysis. The various pathways that initiate this cascade converge at the terminal complement protein C5. Its cleavage produces the potent inflammatory mediator C5B, which initiates the formation of the MAC. In PNH and AHAS, patients have defects in cell membrane proteins like CD55 and CD59 in, PN, in case of PNH that non normally stop complement proteins from attacking blood cells. This defect results in complement proteins attacking white blood cells and destroying red blood cells. Eculizumab specifically targets terminal complement protein C5 and prevents its cleavage. This in turn prevents complement proteins from forming MAC and attacking blood cells. As a result, cell lysis and destruction is reduced, which relieves the symptoms of the disease. Complement inhibition at this stage preserves important early complement components like C3 that are critical for the clearance of microorganisms and immune complexes. In in vitro pharmacodynamic studies, first value tested was the dissociation constant, which is used to describe the affinity between two molecules. Affinity for human C5 of parental murine monoclonal antibody generated in mouse hybridomas was assessed using ELISA method. The calculated KD was 30 picomolar. The association and dissociation rates of C5 to recombinant antibody, so eculizumab itself, were faster at the higher temperatures with KD of 120 picomolar at 37 degrees and 46 picomolar at 25 degrees. The hemolytic assays were also conducted that indicated that the humanization process had no effect on the functional activity of the antibody. A species cross-reactivity study was conducted to assess the functional inhibitory activity of eculizumab on C5 in human serum samples compared to a primate and non-primate serum. Hemolytic assay was performed using sera from eight different species. Eculizumab started to block hemolytic activity of human serum at 42 nanomoles and demonstrated complete inhibition at approximately 100 nanomoles of antibody. It did not effectively block hemolytic activity of sera from any primate or non-primate species tested, indicating that the antibody was specific to human complement C5 only. In the next in vitro study, the tissue cross-reactivity of eculizumab was evaluated by assessing binding of antibody to a panel of 38 cross-sections of human tissues. The eculizumab staining was observed in smooth and skeletal muscle and in a couple of other cell types. These results appeared consistent with the expected localization of complement C5 based on published reports of its expression. No pharmacodynamic drug interaction studies have been performed in vitro experiments. In the view that eculizumab does not recognize C5 from other species and is an antibody being specific to human protein only, 
The majority of animal studies were performed using a C5-deficient mouse model that was reconstituted with physiologically relevant serum levels of human C5 protein. The analysis was performed using IgG4 isotype, which is identical to eculizumab, except that it contains in its heavy constant region only the human IgG4 sequence instead of hybrid IgG2 IgG4. A dose of 50 micrograms of described monoclonal antibody administered intravenously resulted in a rapid and potent dose dependent inhibition of HC5 dependent serum hemolytic activity that was maintained for at least 48 hours. In PBS control mice, C5 proteins were able to reconstitute hemolytic activity. Maximum plasma concentrations of eculizumab with therapeutic doses of the drug were achieved within one hour of infusion. Subcutaneous administration of eculizumab also provided protection from C5-dependent serum hemolytic activity. However, the kinetics of systemic inhibition was delayed by 12 to 24 hours when compared to IV injection. Serum samples collected after 48 hours... Um, Sorry, serum samples collected during 48 hours after eculizumab dosing were assayed for the levels of the antibody. After IV injection, a relatively rapid distribution half-life of 4 hours was followed by a slow decline in serum concentrations over the next 48 hours. In contrast, subcutaneous administration was followed by a progressive rise in serum concentration. Serum levels of the antibody at 24 hours and thereafter were comparable in both SC and IV injections. It was determined that the molar ratio of antibody to C5 required to completely inhibit serum complement hemolytic activity was approximately uh, 0.5 to 1. Based on average values for human C5 plasma concentration and total plasma volume, it was predicted at that point that single dose of 1.5 to 2 mg per kilogram of eculizumab should be sufficient to acutely mediate complete inhibition of complement-mediated hemolytic activity in vivo in humans. There is a list of studies that were not performed in animals, which was acceptable in the view that eculizumab is a biologic belonging to a very well-known and widely used class of monoclonal antibodies. No biotransformation experiments were done, however, metabolism of eculizumab is thought to occur predominantly via lysosomal enzymes to small peptides and amino acids, as, as is described for other proteins. No specific excretion studies have been performed. It is expected, though, that since antibodies are transmitted in the mother's milk, eculizumab will probably also be excreted in the milk. Although no formal drug interaction studies have been performed in animals, Eculizumab has been administered to patients treated concomitantly with a broad range of medications commonly used in patients with PNH and EHAUS. Therefore, the absence of pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic drug interaction studies were justified taking into account clinical data. Efficacy of eculizumab per se was only performed in human trials. Efficacy animal studies were conducted in mice using a surrogate mouse antibody directed against murine C5. Since there are no murine models of PNH, studies targeting other therapeutic areas with potential involvement of C5 activation were performed. These models provided substantial evidence that anti-C5 antibody could effectively block terminal complement activation, leading to a reduction in terminal complement-mediated pro-inflammatory pro events. The surrogate murine antibody targeting mouse C5 was also used in animal toxicity studies in which no compound-related significant abnormalities were observed. Two repeat dose toxicity studies showed no indications of toxicity as measured by mortality and morbidity, clinical observations and body weights after IV administration up to three times weekly for four consecutive weeks. During reproductive toxicology studies, various no observed adverse effect levels of antibody were established. No genotoxicity or carcinogenicity studies have been performed with eculizumab. 
However, the repeat dose toxicity study with a surrogate murine anti-mouse C5 antibody showed no cytotoxic or proliferative activities suggestive of, of carcin carcinogenic risk at dose levels showing significant inhibition of C5 activation. Antibodies in general do not interact directly with DNA and therefore are unlikely to have any genotoxic potential. No placental transfer studies have been done due to the specificity of the antibody. Nevertheless, IgG antibodies are known to cross the placental fetal barrier from mother to offspring, so eculizumab is expected to do that too. Soliris is a sterile, clear, concentrated solution supplied in 30 ml single-use vials. Each vial contains 300 mg of eculizumab, sodium phosphate monobasic and dibasic, sodium chloride, polysorbet 80 and water. Prior to administration, it should be diluted to a final concentration 5 mg per ml. Such prepared admixture is administered by intravenous infusion over around 35 minutes via gravity feed, a syringe type pump or an infusion pump. Dosage regimen for soliris consists of an induction and maintenance phase. For PNH, in the induction phase, 600 mg of eculizumab is administered every week for the first four weeks and 900 mg is delivered in week 5. The maintenance phase consists of 900 mg soliris dose administered every 14 days thereafter. Regimen for A house is similar, however dosage numbers are higher by around 30%. Because of the risk of many meningococcal infections, soliris prescribers are required to ensure patients receive a meningococcal vaccine prior to starting the therapy. Here I listed all the information about Soliris that was included in the IND package submitted by Alexion Pharmaceuticals to FDA. All the preclinical studies I have presented here uh, came from a pharmacological review. Thank you.